We have designed these videos to help you master your Husqvarna Viking Onyx 15 sewing machine. So let's talk buttonholes. Now, if you're not a garment sewer, don't worry, there's lots of places buttonholes appear that are not on garments. You can use them to be decorative. So for example, on the quilt behind this machine, right there. Those are buttonholes that are uh, got ribbon woven through them. You can use them for openings that need to kind of have something hooked through them, like a shower curtain, or even where a drawstring pair of pants might need a little extra tugging to hold them up. <laughs> you can run, uh, do, sew two buttonholes and then run the cord through there and then tie them off. So it's all super fun. On this machine, you do have a included buttonhole foot. It is foot C. Now, how would I know that that was the foot I needed? Well, you could look in your manual, you can watch this video, or you can go down to the sewing advisor right here. Did you even know this pulled out? Well, let's take a look and see what you are looking at. So on this first level, by the way, there's two levels here, is the fabric noted as woven fabric. So today I'm working on some denim, so I am gonna be working on this front page. But if today's buttonhole was to be done on fabric that was more of a knit fabric, we are gonna follow the second page. So each of these are the techniques. So one of them is a buttonhole. You've got blind hem, you've got basting, you've got overcasting. And on a stretchy fabric, these are your stitches, it recommends. This is the foot that came with your machine that it wants you to use. And then also what the stitch length is and then the tension. On this column, this little picture indicates like vinyl or leather. And once again, this is probably, why is it blank here? It's because this particular buttonhole is not ideal on that type of fabric. So you kind of need more of a straight stitch, rectangular uh, stitch, not a satin stitched uh, buttonhole for that fabric. Okay, so let's just go back to the top page. Let's go ahead and take a look. There's the C foot that we were um, following. That's why I knew to pull it out. Tensions, we can adjust between two and four and stitch length needs to be turned to da, 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 0.5. So some are in this zero to one range. Depending on your thread thickness you're using, that's what we need to do. Adjust your tension. If you feel like any of the stitches are from the bobbin or coming up to the top, you can reduce that down a little bit. I'm gonna leave this because I actually have two different threads in my machine, a different thread in my needle than I have on my bobbin. So we'll just let it kind of be as is. So what you're gonna wanna do is put two marks. How long do you want your buttonhole to be? You can put a mark here and a mark here. How do you know where to start? So first off, take a look at your stitch length knob. This is a four step buttonhole. So we're gonna start on where it says number one. And number one shows that the leg, the right leg is gonna be sewn first and that it, the arrow points this way. So it's gonna come down. We're gonna go over to two. That's gonna be the tack at the bottom. And you're in charge of how long to make these when you stop, how many stitches are in the tack? When you go to go back up leg three on the left side, you're gonna come back to where we started. That's why it's important to have both lines drawn and then finish up with another tack. Again, same similar amount of stitches that you did at the bottom for step four. Okay, here we go. Again, you can use this foot because, you know why you use this foot? It's on the back side, there are little channels that will help keep the two satin stitches that you're gonna be doing running parallel. So as you come down, that second one doesn't kind of angle away. It will actually track back up the stitching that you did the first time. So let's go ahead and um, come on in. I'm gonna get you nice and close so you can see how it stitches. And then I'll be switching from one, two, three, and then back to four. Since we are doing some decorative stitches and some satin stitches in some previous videos already, you can see that we can adjust the length to really get the, the filled in satin stitch that we want. So if your first one doesn't come out perfect or you want it more dense, you can always uh, adjust it just a little bit closer to zero in on the stitch length knob and just try it again. This is gonna be a practice. Now, I know I haven't drawn my lines, but we're gonna just go, go ahead and go for it. So we'll go ahead and start to stitch. You can kind of see the needle is making a satin stitch kind of over here on the right side. 
And how about we'll just go that far. Before you turn it to step two, just make sure your needle is up out of the fabric. You, you just don't wanna like change it while it's down because the needle is gonna shift and well, you don't need to put any extra bend to that needle. Now that it is at step two, let's go back and forth. You can pick, you know, six or seven times. How about that? Needle stop down, so I'm gonna just bring it up. Switch it over to step three. Now, since I didn't put a line, um, I'm kind of just watching as I am going up to where we started. And, oop, there it is. So I'm gonna stop. <laughs> and if you ever overshoot it, I'll show you what we can do. Here's the tack at the top. If you're not filling in or you have a little gap, you can always go back to step one and do a few stitches down that side, which actually I'm gonna do. Okay, so let's take a look, see how we've done. Actually, look at that buttonhole. We can find ourselves making any length of buttonhole you want because this foot is a manual foot. We're not locked into a certain length. So if you need a start point and an end point and you need an opening that it is that big, no problem. Just go ahead, keep on stitching down, do your tacks and stitch on back. It really works. If you want, you could always stitch it a second time and just to fill it in. I know some people like to do that. So if your first one isn't as filled in as you wish and you're like, oh no, you could just do it again. Just stitch right on top. Maybe don't do as many tacks uh, once you get to the bottom or when you're back up top, you probably have plenty, but just a couple. And then you'll have a nice dense middle to work with. So give that a try. Buttonholes are not hard. Don't ever shy away from a project that has buttons holes on it. This machine has an awesome button holer and that was how easy it is. Put the foot on and do all four steps and you're ready to go. Hey, and try out some decorative thread. Who knows? You might find a new way that you always do buttonholes, make them a little sassy. Have some fun and check out those links in the description below to the playlist that has all the free video tutorials on this beautiful Husqvarna Viking Onyx 15 machine.